tutorial. So today, because my starter is lovely and active, we are going to mix our very first bread dough. If your starters are not quite as active yet, don't panic, don't despair. They will find their groove, they will find their rhythm. You just need to keep giving them regular feedings and keep monitoring them. So at this point, our starter, well, my starter has reached her prime ripeness and she's ready to be baked with. So it's important that when you are mixing your dough, when you're making your dough, you want to use your starter at its prime level of ripeness. There are various levels that you can use it at, but for today we want to use the prime level of ripeness. Okay, now the dough that we will be mixing today, it's going to have 450 grams of either white bread flour or all-purpose flour and 50 grams of, I've used dark rye, you can also use a light rye, or you could use wholemeal flour or spout flour. We're just going to be adding a little bit of flavor to our dough. And for the rest, we have 400 milliliters of lukewarm water, we have 10 grams of salt, and we are going to use 100 grams of our ripe starter. Okay, now the traditional way of baking sourdough bread involves various steps and it can get very technical. Today, because this is your very first loaf of sourdough bread that you'll be baking with me, I'm going to delete all those steps and we're going to mix the dough all together using all the ingredients one shot. So this is not the technical way of baking sourdough, but it will allow you to get started to understand the process. And in future videos, I will show you how to do the more technical sourdough baking techniques. Okay, so don't start shouting at me and commenting that this is incorrect. I know that it's not the traditional way of doing it, but I am encouraging you to just get baking. So without further ado, let's have a look. We are going to mix our two flours together. Okay, so my dark rye and my all-purpose flour. I'm going to add my 10 grams of salt. Okay, so usually you wouldn't add the salt already at this point. Next, we are going to pour in our 400 milliliters of lukewarm water. Okay, and we need to scale out our 100 grams of starter. Now, if you've been feeding at the 1 1 1 ratio and you've been using 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water, and 50 grams of culture, you'll know that when you remove your 100 grams of starter from the jar, you will have 50 grams left inside the jar. And that is what you're going to keep feeding now moving forward. It can go back into the fridge. You don't have to feed it immediately. You could feed it tomorrow or whatever you want to do. Um, but you do want to maintain and refresh that little portion of starter going forward so that you always have a little bit of starter that you can maintain, grow and use in future breads. Okay, so we are removing 100 grams. Perfect. And I'll just close that. I'll feed that little portion later. And this is going straight into our mixture. Okay. And again, this is really fast forwarding the whole process. We are supposed to do this in different stages, but because I want to show you that it's possible for you guys who have never baked bread before in your lives to also mix a dough together one shot, you can actually bake very good bread. Okay. Okay. Get that out of the way. Now we're going to start using our hand. Okay. I'm going to mix with my left hand and I'm going to keep this close. And I'm just going to start mixing the flour and the water and the starter together. And you just mix. Always 
use your dough scraper to clean your hands, to bring more flour to the center of the bowl. Always remember to just check underneath as well because that's often where a lot of the dry flour hides. The unhydrated flour. And this is going to do the trick. And like in my first bread video that I posted to YouTube, you are going to come back to this dough every hour and you're going to give it stretch and hold. And that's just going to develop your gluten strength. So you're going to stretch and fold your dough every hour. So this is our first stretch and fold. And you'll just be doing this every hour. You can see the dough is already getting quite light and airy and holding its shape quite well. Some bubbles forming as well and it's as easy as that. So repeat every hour for four or five hours. And it's been four hours and we are now ready to shape our dough. You can see that it's really risen a lot. There are quite a lot of bubbles as well. There's a lot of lightness and airiness and it's looking gorgeous. Perfect. So you're going to use your flour duster or your flour shaker to just dust your surface or your countertop with a little bit of flour. And you are going to, with your dough, Scraper, just ease the dough up. Now look at all of that beautiful gluten. There we go. So if you chose to use a slightly lower hydration, your dough won't be quite as soft and loose and airy as this one, but it's totally fine. It's still going to give you very beautiful bread. Now we are going to, if, if you wanted to, you could divide this into two and make two small loaves or you can make one large loaf. I really like to make one large loaf because the large loaves keep fresh for longer and um, I just really like the, the size and the feel and the robustness of the large loaves. But if you want to make two small ones, perfectly fine. So I am just going to very briefly fold this over itself go and we are going to just let it rest allow this to rest just for 10 minutes right so the dough has been resting for 10 minutes and it's time to shake Gently tip the dough over onto its back and fold it in towards you. Turn it around and fold it in once more. Okay? And now we are simply going to fold it in over itself. And it's as easy as that. This is now going into our prepared Banneton or bread basket or proving basket, whatever you want to call it, and we are and this is going to give us one huge, beautiful sourdough loaf. 
Now at this point, you can allow the dough to ferment uh, for a further two to three hours at room temperature, or you can pop it into the fridge overnight and bake it off in the morning. So I would recommend about 12 to 14 hours, even 24 hours in the fridge before you bake it in a hot Dutch oven. So there we go. So we're going to let it rise now. And we are finally ready to bake. So we are going to need a Dutch oven. You can use a ceramic Dutch oven or an enamel Dutch oven or a cast iron Dutch oven as you please, as long as it's oven safe. So you need a lid. Here's our shaped dough and it's beautifully proofed. And we will need a little bit of flour as well as either a long or short um, baker's blade to cut. So a very sharp blade to cut. Right. So we are going to open the Dutch oven and slowly just unwrap our dough. Look how beautifully proofed this is. Beautiful, happy dough. Lightly dust with flour. Just a little bit. And gently help it into the Dutch oven. Okay. If you find there's too much flour on the surface, you can very gently brush it off. And now it is time to make a cut. Now the reason for cutting is that you are going to guide the steam out of the loaf, all right, out of the rising loaf. You can make it as intricate or simple as you like. So just to show you the first cut, I'm just going to do a very very simple cut like this and this is going straight into the preheated oven so off to the oven it is so 25 minutes after putting your bread in the oven you will need to remove your lid and look at this beautiful volume that you've got in your dough in your bread now it's time for some color so the bread is going back into the oven and we're going to drop the temperature. And there you have it, your very first loaf of sourdough bread. Congratulations. You can bake the loaf as dark or as light as you want, as long as it sounds hollow when you tap it underneath. So here I know that this loaf is definitely ready and baked through. Your very first sourdough loaf made with your own starter that you made this week. Congratulations and I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope your breads are so beautiful and delicious and let's bake again soon.